From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to explore the power of unlocking anonymous visitor identification. Joining us is Nick Lissette, who is the CEO of the Black Pearl Group, which is your go-to solution for identifying and engaging with your website visitors. Black Pearl Group has recently launched a product called Pearl Diver, which is a feature-rich platform that helps you transform anonymous traffic into quality leads to boost conversions and revitalize your email marketing strategies. And in addition to providing us with our guest today, the Black Pearl Group is also a sponsor of the MarTech Podcast. So far this week, Nick and I have talked about unlocking anonymous visitor identification, and yesterday we talked about how site visitor ID enhances lead gen. Today, we're going to wrap up our conversation talking about strategic visitor identification insights. All right, here's the third part of my conversation with Nick Lissette, the CEO of the Black Pearl Group. Nick, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Good to be back. We're concluding our trilogy, right? Big dramatic finish. Always a pleasure to be here. And yes, this is the third in our series of three conversations today. I was trying to think of what the great trilogies are. I was going to say Indiana Jones, but now there's like seven of those. They go too far in most instances. I think we could agree that there's usually that fourth one wrecks it. But, uh, you know, The Godfather's obviously your epic trilogy. Yeah, but the third one was garbage. And <laughs> Star Wars, a great trilogy. No, it, it's actually three trilogies that are apparently getting worse and worse and worse. Look, this is going to have to be something that we continue because we're going to be the next Star Wars, apparently. So we (laughs) need multiple trilogies. It's the last conversation for this week. And so far, we've talked about what visitor identification is, how you can understand who's visiting your website. And yesterday, we talked about how to use that information to appropriately contact the leads that you have. But there's more information that you can get other than understanding who's on your website and directly reaching out to them to start selling. It could tell you about how your website is performing. So talk to me a little bit about the strategic insights you can garner from visitor identification. Seeing who turns up is key and getting specifically the job titles of who's turning up or the revenue of the companies informs you if your top of the funnel kind of marketing is in the right place or not. Our own traffic is a great example. So on the Pearl Diver site, we use Pearl Diver on Pearl Diver, obviously. It goes without saying. And the other companies in the group was confusing internally because we talk about, hey, what's happening with the Pearl Diver for Pearl Diver? You'd have to know internally what's happening, right? But we had a really interesting situation a couple of months ago where our average revenue per sale wasn't quite where it needed to be. And we could see that we were probably attracting slightly smaller customers than ideally we would like to get our average customer, average revenue per customer up. It's a really insightful trend because we could then tweak our advertising and what we were saying and the messaging in that. And within one month, the next month's sales results, the average revenue per customer had increased up. And of course, we all know it's way easier to sell higher average price point than sell more to more people. So having those insights and marketing and is just gold to configure your messaging to get more of the people you want. All right. So you identified you had a revenue per user problem, and then you're able to look to see who are the users that are coming to your site. How do you connect the dots there and understand whether it is an inbound marketing problem that is driving traffic from less valuable sources? Is it your content marketing? What are the ways that you're able to actually use the data identifying, all right, here are the people that are on the site to figure out and solve the problem that you had? 
Yeah, well, of course, you can tie in where they're coming from. You're always going to be able to see the source and their relative effectiveness of those sources. So how to use that information? You can see who's turning up. Great. Then you can see the revenue of that company. You can see the job title. So there are two key parts. Are you getting big businesses or small businesses? And is your messaging reaching the right person within that company? So again, using our example, what we could see is we were getting the $1 to $10 million bracket of revenue coming in, and we we're getting business owners. Now, that's fantastic. They're probably my favorite kind of clients, right, because they stick with you a long time. They're loyal. We provide amazing value for money for them. But they're always the lowest price point, typically, because they're not an established company or a small company. So it's $198 per month. As we say it in New Zealand, it's cheap as chips, right? That price point, but it would be cheap as Taco Tuesday in America. I think with chips and fries, frugal as <laughs> fries, maybe. Hey, we've given each other one great saying each: <laughs> frugal as fries. That's a winner. <laughs> you wrote that one down quickly, yeah? Yeah, I did because I've been struggling for years on what the over the Pacific way of framing that would be. So what we wanted then was like, hang on, yeah, we've got some great marketing and messaging that's working really well for entrepreneurs. Now we need to get some messaging that's great for marketeers of larger companies. And so the new messaging came through is only spend your retargeting money on the people that you want as customers. And messaging around that, obviously, far more articulate. And that attracted an entirely new audience. And those, of course, were of larger companies that could have marketing managers and marketing teams and more established budgets. So, yeah, it's just very useful when you can see revenue and the job titles. So talk to me a little bit about the either exporting or your ability to manipulate the data that you're collecting with Pearl Diver. You can get your visitor identification data. Are you able to feed it into a database? How are people using this data of understanding all right, who is on the site to then map it to where did they come from upstream and then how much value did they create downstream? There's two ways that people will use it. A more established company uses us as a data capture and purification tool, and then they feed our information into whatever their central source of truth or their central marketing machine is. So again, capture that critical information on our site visits, use us for some engagement measuring on how many times they've turned up or have you emailed them in the past, and then drive all the actions out of that based off Marketo or HubSpot or whatever your flavor is or Zoho, whatever you want to use. The other people, Pearl Diver is used almost like a CRM for people that are never going to use a CRM because they don't have the time or inclination or they're just not that way built. Smaller companies. Well, smaller companies or people like, obviously, we have a CRM and things like that, but none of my actions on investors that I'm dealing with or key contacts is driven out of a CRM. I'm never going to use a CRM, right? I use that based off engagement notifications from my email and a whole lot of other information like that. When it comes down to Pill Diver for a small company, it's kind of like a anti-hero CRM. It's kind of the way it is. You go in, you can see who your customers could be or maybe your existing customers coming back and you're like, oh, hang on, yeah, I should call them. So it just informs you on your next action. So that's typically the two ways that it can be used. All right. So you're able to basically use your Pearl Diver data as a notification system to understand who's coming to these sites, giving you the information if you want to be reactive in terms of the data that your site is collecting, or you can use it as a direct data source and integrate it into a larger platform like a database. As you start to think about the future of your business, is there a way to understand which way the tide is turning using your visitor identification? Can you get a sense of what your future business is going to look like based on your current leads, whether your products are scaling? Talk to me about your ability to look into the crystal ball and tell what next quarter and next year are looking like based on visitor ID data. That is why we found a Black Pearl Group. It's about using data and measuring the engagement of those relationships with your digital assets, whether email or website, to measure frequency and engagement. And you can see very clear trends from that. So maybe to talk about email, which is a slightly easier one to use as an example, 
you can tell whether you've got a healthy relationship with someone or not by the frequency of them responding to your email or by how quickly they open it or read the content of that email after you've sent it through, how many times they revisit that email. And if that's like the time from sending to opening to responding is tight, there's a high engagement. If it's long and then you have to send two emails to everyone, it's poor. So engagement, what I call the word engagement, which is maybe frequency of visits or time as well between visits or time between engagements, man, that will give you a very strong barometer on what's happening in the future with your customer or that prospect. You know, I think going into this conversation, my intuition is a lot of people will think site anonymous site visitor identification means you're getting information people don't want to give you. Right. And there, there's something where I think that there might be an ethical concern of whether you should be collecting and using data that isn't expressly handed to you by the customers. Now, the reality is, you mentioned this yourself, the big companies do this. You go to a website, Google knows you're there, Facebook knows you're there, Apple knows you're there. But if you're the website owner, you don't get to know that. That does seem a little backwards. But even if you don't feel like, all right, I don't want to be able to get information that was expressly given to me, there is so much value out of understanding who is visiting your website, not just because you want to reach out to them directly. Sure, you can do that but because it helps you understand who's visiting your website. It helps you understand what their nature of engagement is. It helps you understand how your marketing channels are performing. It helps you do some predictive analytics on the future health of your business. So whether it is purely a lead generation tactic, trying to reach out to the people that are already engaging with you that are in the middle of your funnel, whether it's understanding who your prospects actually are that you're engaging with, or whether it's understanding the future performance of your business, there's no better source to understand what's happening with your website than site visitor identification. So Nick, now that I've said my piece, any last words you want to mention that we haven't covered already about site visitor identification or what's happening at the Black Pearl Group? That was the greatest wrap up I've ever heard. I just heard that and I'm like, again, now it's 2 1. I'm taking two of the things that you've said and using them in the future. I can't add anything to that. That's exactly how you should use this information. And all I'd say to anyone is if you're curious about this, if you have any other questions, and I don't mind if you're a buyer or you're just curious and don't understand that, reach out to any of our team. So I guess the difference with us is that there is a whole lot of people around the globe and their job is to help. Just ask a question if you don't quite know how to use this or got any questions around whether that will work for your company or the legality of it. We're just here to help. That's our job. Nick, I bet you say that to all the Pretty Podcast hosts. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Thanks again for being our sponsor and for walking us through what site identification is and how to use it. Thank you for having me. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Nick Lissette, the CEO of the Black Pearl Group. If you'd like to get in touch with Nick, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes, or you could visit his company's website at pearldiver.io. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even apply to be the next guest speaker on the Martech podcast. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can reach out to me directly on LinkedIn. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. (music) 